You have to. Ruslan, ask them from downstairs to turn off the radio. They, they, they don't miss what to listen to. <coughs> <laughs> there is a, in the parasha, we spoke about it a bit in the morning, very difficult Rashi on the parasha. Rashi says in the parasha, that the parasha itself is a different, that Hashem spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai saying, speak to the children of Israel and say to them. And we talk about the laws of the Seven seals, Shnat Shemitah. And uh, Rashi brings Midrash that says that if I ask and I say, you know what, this, this is something that we, uh, we learned in, in Mount Sinai. So what about the other stuff? When did we learn it? Somewhere else. Somewhere else. But we know that everything that we learned was from Mount Sinai. So what is the Chidush of this year that we say that, uh, that this parasha was given in our Sinai? So Rashi brings over here Midrash that says, we have to learn that in Mount Sinai, we didn't just get the, um, the mitzvot, we get all the explanation of the mitzvot, all the details of the mitzvot in Mount Sinai. So I want to ask you a question. Before this Pasuk, before this Torah, if I would ask you, when did we receive the Torah, what would be the answer? Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai. What did we receive in Mount Sinai? Everything. Everything. So the Midrash says over here, no, but not just everything, every everything. What you'll say? It's okay, but uh, what, what is the Chidush? What is the new stuff over here? It's clear. And um, what is the laws that we, the Torah talks about here? That six years you are going to, uh, you may sow your field, and six years you may prune your field, your vineyard, and they, but on the seventh year there shall be complete rest of the land, Shabbat of Hashem. Your field shall not be sowed, and your, your vineyard shall not be pruned, and uh, and they, everything should be uh, open. You cannot charge for your foods. Everything should be given to the people. It's called Hefker. So we were thinking why the Torah starts and mentions the way of Har Sinai, especially on this parash, on this, on this law. So we made an accounting once, my, one of my rabbis, Rav Ben David, she here, he told us a very interesting pshat. He said, imagine a person, a Jew, he bought a piece of land with top dollar, $100,000. And he planted over there many grape, grape tree, a wine yard. Okay? What happened? After the first year he comes there, it's full of fruits and it's beautiful. Can he touch these fruits? No. What is the name of the fruits? Orla. Orla. Okay, he so said next year, no problem. Next year, he's fixing, walking very hard. Can he touch the fruits? No. No. Okay, next year, the third year, can he touch the fruits? No. No. Okay, next year. Year number four, can he touch the fruit? Yes. But what he has to do with the fruit? It Take it to Yerushalayim. Can he go Neta Revai? Okay, fifth year already, can he touch the fruits? Yes. Sixth year, can he touch the fruits? Yes. Oh Hashem, seven years? Okay. Open the gates, it's not yours. So this poor person from seven years of working, how many years he get? Two years. Two. How much percent is it? Around 28 percent. But wait a minute. When he's going to, uh, to harvest, 
What is over here? Leket, peah, shik, now all types of taxes. Leket, peah, shikha. First master, second master, turma gdola, turma ktana. Or lelot. And uh, you come eventually that this person, this businessman, 80% of the income of the first seven years doesn't belong to him. It's a good business. If I were away, I'd say, why should I walk? I can go to, uh, to sit in the corner to learn Torah. When is the walk over there? So, make an accounting that the first seven years, he gets just 20% from all the harvest. It's even not 50-50. Why? What was, why we say over here, this is the Mount Sinai Mitzvah? Because um, I believe that the source or the purpose of all the mitzvot and all the Torah is to teach a lesson to a person, hey, you are not the owner of nothing in this world. You are not a decision maker in this world. And don't start to lie to yourself that you are the owner. People have the idea of imaginating. I tell you a story that happened in the, in the land of Tunis, Jerba. There was a, a person that he was, he had a psychological problem, we call it like this. What was his problem? He all the time was thinking that there is uh, yeah. there is a jar on his head and it's full of water or something. And whenever he was going in the street, he was going straight, not right, not because the jar should not fall down. But there was nothing on his head. People told me, what happened to you? He said, no, 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 no. He was sleeping like this because he wanted to fall down. He was walking in the street like this. Never, never bend his head. Why? Because the jar might fall down. But there is no jar over there. A pure imagination. But this is the way he made a decision. So one smart man decided to help him. So when he was walking on the street next to his house, he bought a jar. And when he went next to him, he was throwing on the floor and the jar smashed. And he, when he say, his friend told him, you saw the jar fell down and, uh, and now it's on the floor broken. He touched his head and he said, Baruch Hashem, I am healthy. So for a few days, he felt very good. He was walking, exercising. Then one child came and told him, let me tell you something, you know what is the truth? The truth is that I saw him throwing the jar behind you on the balcony. You look at him, then he touches it, he says, oh, you're right, it's still here. Well, this is the problem of this Jew, Hashem should give him a refresh lema. But but it's a kind of, people have this ability to imagine that they are making decisions in this world. It's my land, it's my grapes, it's my tree, it's my wine yard. So we say in Har Sinai, the essence of the Torah is not like this. The essence of the Torah is to a person to know what is the pshat of all the mitzvot of the Torah? What is the pshat? You know what is the pshat? The pshat is that the essence of the Torah is to a person to realize that he is not a decision maker. The only thing he can do in this world is just to follow. The, uh, the, uh, But 
Now I would like to touch something to, um, to make our life even... We understand, okay, so I am going to, um, to learn Torah. I am going to keep mitzvot and hopefully it's going to help me to walk up about all my, all, all my problems, which is wonderful. But you know what we are doing now when we count, how much we counted today? 28. 28. Why are we counting Sfirat Haomer? Why are we keeping all this Halachot Avelut? You know what? Why are we counting the Halachot Avelut? Rabbi Kiva's students. Yeah. Did they learn Torah? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were very good students? In Torah level? Yeah. What was the problem? They didn't respect each other. They didn't respect each other. So wait a minute. So what did they learn? We are not such big tzaddikim. What we learn from when we learn Torah? You have to respect each other. You have to be kind to each other. Don't abuse each other. And here we see the Torah says, no, they didn't respect each other. How can we understand it? How can we understand it? So, we talk about over here, if somebody is not ready and is going to learn Torah, he might interpret the Torah totally in, the, in a different way, in the wrong way. And instead of making a progress, you can use it, as we call it, kardom lachforba, meaning he's going to use it in backfiring. He learns, but on the wrong way. How can you learn in the wrong way? How is that possible? How is possible? So, the um, God blessed Am Yisrael with one of the greatest philosophers and, uh, and uh, educated scholar people in the history of Judaism. His name was the Rambam, Maimonides. And the Rambam talks about, before he talks about Pirkei Avot, there he gave an introduction to Pirkei Avot. It's famous by the word, by the, this, this famous by the name, the eight chapters of the Rambam, Shmone Parkim Le Rambam. And it's a beautiful introduction to explain us what is the right approach to learn Masechet Avot that we learn on Sfirat Haomer to work on ourselves. On the third chapter, it's all like this. Amrua Kadmonim, our sage says, a body of the human being happened that he is healthy or, God forbid, he is sick. We understand it. <coughs> he has a fever, a virus, this problem, this problem. And as the body has sicknesses, the soul has sicknesses too. The nefesh, there is a healthy person and there is a sick person. The body is very good, but something in the neshama is a problem. And then he says, Ukmo shecholiyad ufuag ufot yedamu lefsegar gashatam שמתוק ומר מר ומתוק, והנאה זה לא נאה, ותגדל תאוותם ותגדל הנאתם. Same thing, חולי הנפשות. What happens when a person has become sick? He can lose his appetite. He is hungry, but he will not eat. Or the opposite, obesity is going to eat without no, no boundaries, no control. Or he's going to start to eat wrong food, junk food, always going to fast altogether. And uh, people that are, are going to enjoy to eat coals and dust and, 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 and sand, all kind of machalot. The same thing, those people who have problems in their neshamot, that they have many minuses, and they think that what is good is bad, and what is bad is good, and it's going to be totally messed up. And thinking by making good is going to do bad, by making bad is going to do good, and he's lost the compass, he's lost his direction. 
And as a sick person, he goes to a doctor, a person who has problem with Cholea Nefashot, with a sick soul, has to approach to the smart people, to the scholar people, which are the doctors of the souls. And they are going to warn them from all the things, from the bad things they think is good, and we guide them in the right way to heal their uh, sick or heal soul. The problem is that when a person he sees on his body, he can realize that he has a problem. He see he gains weight. He see he lost weight. He see he's pale. At least there is something to him to to relay to say, okay, I'm going to call now my doctor. But the Cholea Nefashot, people that his problem with his soul, he has a very difficult way to understand that it is a problem. Why? Because his way of thinking going from his soul, and this is the way he sees the world. So it's very difficult for him to understand what you want from him. Achshav. אמנם מרגישים אני משרים אחר נותיים אמר אמר הספר אמיתי מספר דברים כי בשירות לבי אלך אצנו לומר שו בתקבל לרבות סמאו ואמנם אמנם שנה מרגישים שלא מלך דרך חבל ישר בינה שמלך על יצח חכם שיו ילך לחכם לודיר דרך האמת therefore i say that uh, when when i know that my students want to grow up ברוך השם many of you did it they calling me and they say rabbi you know us tell us where to improve. Whatever he's going to do or not to do, at least, he wants to know. He is not so sure that what? That he knows everything. This is a very big plus. And uh, I want to know, but, but tell me. But those of my students, they come to teach me how to live. I say they were already, their machala, the sickness is already reached their brain. Very difficult. They try to teach their parents, their teachers, how to live, they will never be progress. They cannot. So the Rambam on the fourth chapter now talks about how to heal a sick soul. He understands that we use the word in Hebrew, quality, how do you say it in Hebrew? Mida. A quality in Hebrew is called, his name is Mida. What's mean Mida? A measurement. Or a certain level. Mida. Razmir. Mida. So, according to the Rambam, every quality of a person has two sides, and the two extremes are wrong. What is the, uh, what is the best? He call it the middle way. The golden middle. The golden middle way. And he says like this. All the qualities has two corners, has two edges, and both of them are bad. One of them is over, and one of them is the, the, the absence of, the lack of. And what is the good ma'ala? When we say to a person, yes, ma'alot of what is mean, he is in the right, in the right scale. Sometimes you get the, the, the results of the, of the blood test, they give you what is at the margin. This, uh, and this is what we're talking about, the Rambam, you say, depends, you have to be in the, uh, in the normal thing. So, he says that Azirut uh, imimadam mutsad ben rova tava ben der gashavana. So we say like this If somebody desires too much, it's bad. If somebody doesn't know, doesn't want nothing, gave up everything, it's bad too. 
ושתי תכונות הנפש אשר יתחו ברוב התאווה היא תכונת היתרה, והיעדר ההרגשה היא התכונה החסרה. Or the same thing עין יפה, that is a person is between to be a stingy or to be just all the time spending money which he doesn't have. We call it the middle, we call it עין יפה. Or we say if somebody that is happy, from one side is one that has become already swook, like a clown. Another person, a person will be like, 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 a, like an onion, just crying all the time. So the, the middle one, we call it to be a happy person. He doesn't have to be drunk for be a person. But he can be happy, which is the middle way. And the anava, to be humble, is the balance between to be ego or somebody that is already depressed. Shiflut haruach. והנדיבות, the kindness, is between uh, from too much or too less and the, uh, and, the, uh, and the laziness and to the other side. And all these kind of issues, we have to strive in our life to come to a certain normal status for bring these two. The, uh, so he gives us an advice. Let's say a person he understands that he is, is, is stingy, he has problem to spend money. He has problem. Whenever he spend money, he gets, high, he gets uh, fever and is uh, sweating. So we say for the first time to take out of your stinginess, you have to start to give more than you even can. You have to give and 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 to give. And to give. And then slowly, slowly, you're going to balance yourself. You're going to, um, the other extreme will push you to the, mid to the middle. Or somebody that he feels that he has um, a lot of ego, he has, to he has to make himself embarrassed and like, accept it. Once I met, uh, you know, on Sunday they are coming to, uh, to collect Zaka, and one of them is a very rich person. I told him, how can you have to do humiliate yourself collecting dollar, dollar a year, getting from people all kind of mishaberach and, and compliments? So he's telling me, my rabbi told me I have a problem of ego. And once a week I have to go and ask for charity. I can give more money than all of them together. But me, by going there, over here, I am, it's enough for one week not to feel too much good about myself. It's a, it's a kind of... A, He's making $100, $200 going to 10 difficult different scenarios. He can put, take money from his own account, but the rabbi say, no, I want to go from 200 people and get embarrassed. Sometimes they give you mishebra, sometimes they give you uh, other adjectives or uh, and, uh, the, uh, <coughs> and now the Rambam talks about <coughs> Very interesting aspect, which <coughs> I believe it's, this is the emet of Torah. He said many people, they, were very, they become very holy. They decided that they would like to fast and not drink, not, not drink wine and not, don't drink, eat meat. And, uh, and go alone on the mountains. And, uh, and they did it just because they want to work on themselves. But when other people try to imitate them, they try to torture themselves, and they start to think that Judaism is about to torture yourself, and fasting, and isolating yourself, and don't talk to nobody. Like God doesn't like the body, like Hashem is the body, is the enemy of Judaism. And he didn't know that all of this is not true. What he explains? He explains, somebody had a problem with ego, so he decided he's going to collect money for the humility himself. But, he not, but not that the ultimate goal him to be like this. He has to go through this to a certain point, and then he's going back to the real life. What other people did, they say, no, okay, we're going to follow him, we're going to make our life, all our life like this. It's a mistake. And he gives an example. Somebody saw a sick person, the doctor gave him, gave, gave him antibiotics. 
I need healthy. He said, I don't want to be sick. I'm not taking the antibiotic now. <laughs> Will it help him? It's going to be even, it's going to be backfiring. And therefore, he says that these people try to, try to uh, uh, torture their body. And he says it's a big mistake because Hashem doesn't want you to torture your body. And you know, even to, even to, um, to fast, we are fasting from the Torah once a year on Yom Kippur, and the Rabbanim say we, we have all five, five, five somewhat. And it's based on a pasuk in the, king, uh, in the prophet of Zechariah, which he says that Tzoma Revi'i v'chamishi shvi'i asiri yafru la'am Yisrael le'yemei le'yemei simcha v'mishte v'chulei. So because it's written in the Navi, so there we have the Yudzayin v'tamuz, and we have Tzoma. But if there was not written, we cannot just adding fast day because Hashem doesn't want us to fast because by fasting so, but how, how people Monday, Thursday mm -hmm. fasting? what? it's a regular thing for them how are they doing? what are they basing their the Rambam say that these people that they're doing it they feel that for them is the right thing and after they measure it and they say but they say but that's not for the, all the people so if you see what the Rambam is, is, is leading us now is to a person to be a healthy person, to love life, but not get messed up with his life. Hashem doesn't want us to live in a tent somewhere in the desert of uh, Nevada or uh, Sinai and not have no water, no electricity and fasting seven days a week, six days a week, and not to sleep or to sleep on the bed full of nails. It's not Judaism. Hashem wants us to enjoy the world, but Hashem wants us to be all the time in a certain of midatova, not to lose the direction, not over here and not over there. And I'm coming now to the point that I would like to speak to you today, which is something which the Rambam emphasized many times, and, uh, and I think this is the, uh, what we spoke about, Hal Sinai. The, um, what do you think? If somebody doesn't feel doesn't feel the need to make a sin. He's already overcome it. And there is somebody that he feels that he wants to make a sin, but he holds himself. Who is closer to, to God? What would you think? Huh? Why? Listen. Listen to the sixth chapter of the Rambam. It says like this. I'm a philosopher. The philosopher says that if somebody is controlling himself, המושל בגופו. אף על פי שיעשה המעשים המועילים, הרי הוא עושה הטובות והוא מתאבל למעשה הרעות ומשתוקק להם, והוא נפתל עם מצרו, הוא מתנגד במעשהו למה שיראו אליו כוכו ואת אהבתו ותכונת נפשו, והוא עושה הטובות והוא מסתער בעשייתן. The philosopher, the Greek philosophies, they say like this. If a person control himself, he wants to eat it, but he holds himself. He wants to go to sleep, but he holds himself. He wants to do something wrong, and he holds himself. We call him that he's a very good person. But according to the Mavala Meule, the better one is the one that is so pure, that he is so, he is so high, 
that what? That he's just doing good. He doesn't have the Yetzirah. He goes next to a not kosher food, he doesn't talk to him anymore. He doesn't feel anything about it. He is already became Hasid. And uh, we see, they say, okay, it's not for me. אבל אמרו אפשר שיעמוד המושל בנפשו במקום המעולה עומד בהרבה מן הדברים ומדרגתו פחותה בהכרח להיות מתאבל לפועל הרע. הוא בדי סי, אבל הוא פרסון הוא קונטרולינג מסלף, הוא לא כל כך טוב, למה? כי כל הזמן יש לו את זה. 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 ואף על פי שלא יהיה אפילו, אם הוא קונטרולינג מסלף, כי בפנים הוא מתאבלים. We say it's bad. Shlomo HaMelech says, Nefesh Ra, Ifta Ra, Vesimcha Lezadik Asot Mishpat, Vekhulei. And the Rambam say, when I investigated this kind of way of thinking, I found to know that the one who has the desires all the time to make the Averot is better than the one who doesn't have them. The Torah way of thinking is different. The Torah way of thinking is when a person is on this fight all the time, he is in a higher level. As the Gemara says, Kol agadol mechavero yitzro gadol mimeno. As more religious you become, as more tests you have to go through. Lo dayeh bazeh. It's not enough. They say the one who is going to control himself he is going to get more reward because his pain is more. As they say, Lefum Tsara Agra. And they want us to say, I don't make this sin because it's not in my nature. I am vaccinated already. I am pure. אפילו לא הסרטה התורה. אז עשה רבן שמעון בן גמליאל, a person should not say it's impossible to eat meat and milk, it's not good, it's not healthy, it's not good to wear shatnez, it's not good to get married to somebody you're not allowed to get married to, but you have to say no. It's excellent, but what can I do if my God told me not to do it. And I will explain. <coughs> A person that never ate in his life not kosher meat. And a person who ate not kosher meat and enjoyed it. And when both of them now are not eating, who has more reward? The one who ate it. The one who ate, why? Because he knows the taste. He knows the taste. He liked it. But now he walked on himself. The one who was not like this, he wasn't the, a blind person to tell him, you know what, I saw something, he said, okay, he doesn't, he doesn't, you cannot get reward for this. The Rambam says that the Hasid is not a person who nullified his evil. Is that possible? No. He feels that, he feels that this is the root of when Christianity and Judaism separated. When you create an artificial, an artificial understanding that you don't have the evil side. You are just pure. You become saint. In Judaism, it doesn't exist. Judaism, they're making a lot of criticism. They're starting from Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Moshe, David. They take everybody, they grill him. He was right here, he was wrong there, he was this, and sometimes you don't understand why. The Torah is talking about it. He made a mistake, he made a mistake. One of the, one of the most ununderstandable things that the Torah says, the Midrash says, that why Dina was punished, why Yaakov was punished? Because he didn't give Dina to his brother Esau. I wouldn't give to Esau nobody. Nobody would give to Esau. I would give to, to Yaakov the Orden of uh, 
the President of the United States. But there was a certain thing that you should not isolate yourself from your brother. The concept of the Rambam wants to say that he wants a person to know that he is going, he is sliding all the time, up and down. And this is what makes the person a live person. But if person is saying, you know what? I am immune. I am holy already. I am saint. Never make a sin. In Judaism, say the Rambam, it's a mistake. It doesn't exist. It's not real. You are, we are in this world, many tests. Yeah, when you pray in uh, Arvid, what do you say? Shvor v'asera satan milfanenu ma'acharenu. You think that you finish with the Yetzirah, you overcome, Baruch Hashem, you warn him, you come to the Shiur, you kept Shabbat, you came at the night of the Shiur, you finish, you feel good, you feel everything is okay. Next morning you wake up, the Yetzirah comes and says, Hello, enough. You were tzaddik yesterday, now go to work. But yesterday I just warned you. Yes, sir, I wake up, he say, I'm here. Before you even woke up, he's there to talk to you. And the work starts again. Milfanenu ma'acharenu. So say that uh, the, 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 the Rambam says, Allah Shalom, he says that a person should not say, I cannot kill, I cannot steal, I cannot lie. You will have to say, I can do everything, but Hashem doesn't want me to do it. I'm taking my will, I'm taking my understanding, I'm taking everything and I put it aside. Hashem, okay, you say no, no. And this, this all the time tension between the good and the bad, the good and the bad, and your choice in the middle, will make you a real Oved Hashem. So let's say some, somebody made a mistake and he fell, and he fell, and he failed. What he has to do? What he has to do? Get up and try again. That's how I come and tell him, okay, you know, it's the way, so it's, 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 it's the end of the game, you lost, my friend. So you tell to the Yetzara, when I won you yesterday, you came today like fresh, like nothing happened. Use his tactic. Hmm? Use his tactic. I'm using your tactic now. You start, and I'm going to start from scratch. Okay, yesterday you won, I'm going to win you today. Because you can say, okay, you know, you, you, I won you, it's a waste of time, you go nowhere, it's the, end, it's the end of the world. No, 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 no. Yesterday you won, today I win, tomorrow, kudo for sure, let's wait for tomorrow. But don't, the Yetzirah try to give us the idea that because you failed, it's the end of everything. Never listen to him. Tell him, you know what, I'm learning from you, from you. When I was a child, they used to show us cartoons. And there was, in the cartoons, they, they, they are fighting and they killed him, they pushed him, they, they, they grind him, and after two minutes, they start, they start all over again. This is, you have to learn that a, a positive psychology in our, in our life. Okay, so you failed, so what? If a person tells me I never failed, he has to see a psychiatrist. I have a good psychiatrist, I can recommend you. One of my students, it's a good one. The, uh, I never fail, I never make mistakes. It doesn't go like this. The Rambam says it's all the time. Both of them are in both sides. Don't go. You feel you go over there, go here, go there. It has to be, you have to control it. You have to monitor it. Um, so what is Hasid according to the Rambam? What is Hasid according to the Rambam? The one that strives, overcomes the one who knows that shrimp may be good, but Hashem says not to eat it. It's wonderful. It's good, you know. Maybe you're absolutely right, but you know, it's against the Torah. What can I tell you? So, as the Torah says, Ezu Gibor, Akovesh et now, I want you to, to um, if somebody will tell you, no, I cannot, I don't have Yetzirah anymore, he's a very dangerous person. If somebody says, I don't have Yetzirah Tov anymore, he's a dangerous person too. You have both of them, over here, they come and they come and they come and you have to be all the time to strive. And you see, 
you feel you see, you feel over here, you feel over there, you have to sense it. I want to touch something over here, a deeper thing. It's my thoughts, I didn't see it nowhere, but I think it's, uh, I think it makes sense. I hope it makes sense. One of my students in the yeshiva, uh, we, had, we had a seminary, the government gave us a grant to teach people not to smoke. There was a big company in America, they are, they are a cigarette maker, so they gave us promotion. So they, a big psychologist came and they made the whole seminary during the day why people should not smoke. So one of the students of the, the yeshiva used to smoke, of course, I didn't know about that. He says, can I talk about not smoking? I say, yes. And for half an hour he was talking about against smoking. He talks beautifully, explain why it's not good, why it's not healthy, why it's against everything, why it's make yourself life and this and lungs and, <coughs> and long, and, and he talks so good. If I was smoking, I would quit smoking after he spoke. <laughs> When he finished, we go outside, tell to his friend, some of the cigarettes, I'm too tired. Mm -hmm. Some of the cigarettes to give me. So I told him, wait a minute, you spoke so nicely. You convinced me not to smoke if I'm not smoking. But why do you keep smoking? I said, Oof, I'm there. so I say it. So I was wondering why whatever he said didn't go inside of him. What, what, what was the, uh, what was the, uh, what, what is the information, what's missing? Because so he knew it's wrong. Everybody knows what's wrong, all right? And they no, are, no. They say, okay, I you wish. can everybody but me. No. They know they're wrong. They don't know they're wrong, they're not right. No, no I, I, I believe it's a certain thing. This is what I would like to tell. It doesn't happen to me. Why? Why are you thinking like this? Because it's a self-protecting, it's a nature of person to protect himself. If for example, I drive fast, I'm not going to get in an accident. He got in an accident because he wasn't, I'm, I'm driving fast, but I'm careful. You know, I smoke, but, you know, I don't smoke that much, so I'm not going to get cancer. I tell you what I think. And I think it's, uh, I think it's, uh, let's go deep a bit. The, um, we, we start the show today on Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai explained us, hey, you're not a decision maker. A person, he can rationalize everything, be a very smart person. But as long as he has inside the engine that was, my ego and I make decision, not nobody else, whatever he learn is going to be interpreted to his own direction. I believe this was the Pshat in Baal Sinai. This is the shot of the, the question of the two asking before. before. What, is the, what is the engine that motivates you? Is the engine of what you want to do? That Sluchina accidentally has come with a shame will? Or this is an engine that my will is not important anymore? Is the shame's will. How you can transfer it from one part to others? Talking about, talking about your ego. This is the mitzvah of Shemitah. You take your land, you open the gate, you say, everybody, please, welcome to my field. It's yours. Inside your heart, you might feel already that you're losing your, your blood pressure and the diabetes is starting to go, the, uh, the sugar in the blood is flying. But my friends, yours, free. And they come inside and they take whatever they want. You can't tell nothing to them. Ego. It never belonged to me. It was never belonged to me. Yeah, but you know, I have this ring for 50 years. It never, never belonged to you. My house, my this, my real estate, my money, my nonsense, my this. The ego, I believe, is that when a person talks and he doesn't put inside himself, it's my ego talks now. I decided. Somebody promised me that he would not keep, that he would not work on Shabbat <coughs> last month. I spoke to him today, he said, Rabbi, I had to go to work. I said, why? I had to. Why? I had to. I said, why did you have to? Because I had to. Who told you you have to? I have to. Everything is about I, 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 I. I told you that Russian is a very holy language. The last, the last letter is yeah. But 
that if somebody is going to follow the, the, the psychology of the language of Russian, it's very good. But if you say, I decided because this, this is the place I should be, you are not religious, you are just... Through China, your religion and Akadosh Baruch Hu and yourself coming together. But if it doesn't fit your agenda, it will not work. It doesn't go like this in life. In life, you have to make decisions. If I am going to say what Hashem asked me to do, it can be very inconvenient. It can be very, very, very out. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have to make sense to me. So what we say in Parashat Shemitah, it was given by Har Sinai. What is the story of Har Sinai? The Har Sinai, the story is like this. My friend, you are a wonderful person. You are a genius. But you are not the boss. Applies to husband and wife, applies to friends, father, children, relationship, student, rabbi, everything. I am not the boss. I am here to make, to make my mission. If Hashem wants it, it will happen. If it doesn't want it, it will not happen. And I can see in my students, those who really progress, that those who really work on themselves. Those who didn't progress, they tried to teach the world what they think. It was very sad. I remember one of my students, I'll finish with this. He came to me, he said he wants to become a millionaire, but he doesn't have time, patience. So he asked me, he asked my blessing to go to learn trading. He paid a lot of money, tens of thousands of dollars to pay trading in computer to buy and sell commodities, or selling currencies, gold, silver, uh, US dollar against the uh, euro, and euro against this, and yen, and shillings, hey, you know, a whole, a whole mishabir. So I told him after a few months of trading, I told him, so what did you learn? I say I learned that if I have ego, I cannot make money. <laughs> How can I make money? He said, I will tell you. I came once, he lost it one day, a lot of money. So the instructor came and told him, how did you lose the money? He said, I okay, bought in the morning, he bought, let's say, a thousand contracts of something, and he started to go down. So, and he started to pray, the instructor told him, my friend, don't try to stop uh, a running train with your, with your with your hand and body. You can barely, you know, I'm going to stop the run, I'm going to, run, to stop the, the train. Say, no, no, don't, even though you are, of course, you are Superman, but the train is a bit stronger than you. So if the train goes 120 miles an hour, never try to stop it. Just go aside and say. So he told him, you have to pray in the synagogue. Not right over here, he told him. <laughs> it goes down, it becomes red, out. It goes, it goes green, you go in. He said, he taught me, I was thinking that even though there is a big crisis and it's going up and down, I'm going to uh, emphasize my way because Takiyar is shield. It was my decision. He told me, friend, you can have your own decisions and thoughts and everything, but not over here. <coughs> so I told him, it's a very good lesson in life. God is running the world, the world in a high-speed train with many wagons over there. Either you're going to join the train. If you try to stop the train, good luck for you. Most of the people could not stop. So you're going to go with the world and don't try to emphasize our ego inside the world. You know what happened when they start to realize it? They start to make money. He didn't want to teach the US, the, the economy, the, the, the trend of the gold, it was down, it was short, it was up, he was buying, buying this, and he, he made money because he tried to not to put his own agenda in the world agenda, with all the respect. In our thing, when it's come to, to, to Midot, if you're wrong, you say, okay, I'm wrong, I have to learn from this. And don't try to justify yourself because it doesn't make sense. The, um, this week is uh, 
We finished Kinyanei Netzach, and we're going to start Kinyanei Ahod, which is the beauty and the, of Judaism, the idea of a Jew has to strive in whatever he can, with all of his efforts, to strive to, to, to be peaceful with people around him, beginning with himself. And, um, and it's a very difficult thing because, because uh, we have tendency to, to make our point and to uh, feel that we're right and not, no, no, nobody beside us is, is right. But Midat Ahod, it's mean to a person to understand that, that it's to be peaceful is the key to all the happiness of life. The unity, to be peaceful with each other, with your wife, with your husband, with your children, with your parents, with your neighbors, with your workers, with your boss, with your rabbi, with your students. This is the key. We call it Marbe Shalom, Marbe Zedaka, Marbe Shalom. All, the, all this, the, the idea of the good things, the Torah finishes, meaning Masatot, Lo Matzah Kadosh Baruch Hu Kli, Chutz Mea Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. So, Be'ezrat Hashem, we are going to have um, certain Zetzat HaDishmaya of this week to be peaceful, to have the patient, to have the, um, the uh, respect to each other, and to bring Mashiach Ibrahim, Amen, Amen, Amen.